in my last video, there was this weird spot of light right under my nose that made me look like I had a booger there. Hopefully, it won't be like that in this video. My dog's here on my bed, as always. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about growing up autistic without knowing it. Yeah. My, like I said in my last video, I'm 24 now and I got diagnosed uh, a little over a year ago. So I spent 23 years of my life being autistic and not knowing it. But looking back on my childhood, uh, it's pretty, obvi pretty obvious that I had it. Uh, I wrote down my thoughts for this video, so there will be less pauses. Uh, I, I never got tested because there really wasn't a need to. I mean, I, I was a good kid in school. I was rarely in trouble. Well, I, there were, there, were some problems. I mean, if, if you talk to my mom and dad, they'll they'll tell you some uh, <laughs> some stories about how I I uh, misbehaved a lot. But I but they just thought it was kind of like being a child and and I would grow out of it and I I have I mean I I don't throw tantrums anymore like I used to but you know other than that there was no need to uh, go see a doctor for anything I was very shy and quiet, extremely. I would basically only talk when someone talked to me or asked me a question. And even then, and my answers would be, would be short and very short and brief. My mom actually once told me that some people thought I I was mad at them for some reason because my answers were just so short. They thought I wasn't talking to them. They didn't know that it was just me that I do that to everyone. Like if they would ask me how I'm doing today, I would say good and that that would be it. My mom told me that I got a double dose of shyness because her and my dad were both shy and quiet as kids. <coughs> and I, I think they just assumed that I would grow out of it. And I, and I did too. I thought I would eventually break out of my shell and and you know talk more and be more outgoing, but as I got older, that didn't really seem to be happening. So when I was a kid, I would play with Legos or other construction-based toys like Lincoln Logs and. When I would build stuff, 
I would follow the instructions exactly. Uh, I would try to make my you know, creation look exactly like it does on the box. Uh, the only time I didn't do that was uh, when I had this uh, a box of Legos that didn't have instructions. So uh, I built a house, I think. I, it was just a, just a general assortment of Legos. And, and I, I remember when I built the house, I wouldn't have the same color bricks touching each other. So I, I wouldn't like have two red bricks touching each other at all. All the colors had to be spaced out. In school, I was you know, a good kid and like I said, rarely got into trouble. If I did get in trouble, it was mainly because the whole class got in trouble. But there were very few times when I did something that that uh, would get only me into trouble. And I got I got good grades, A's and B's. Although as I got older, that kind of started to go down. Like, like after I left elementary school. I did start to get some C's and D's mixed in, but overall my, my grades were so good. And I did, I think looking back now, I think I did so well in school was because I take, I, I take direction so well. And the teacher gives you an assignment and I did it, and if I got homework, I'd do it at home and bring it back when it was due and turn it in. And then, you know, I complete a grade and move on to the next grade, first grade, second grade, third grade, and then elementary school, go to junior high, and then high school. After high school, go to college and that's what I did. And after college, now it's like, like, what do I do next? That's where I'm at in my life. When I was growing up, I did have friends, but it was very few. Uh, and I didn't often see them outside of school except for like for birthday parties or if my parents got together with their parents and even with my friends I, I did not talk very much at all and and kind of like blended in with the furniture or just, you know, faded to the background. And, and you know, I, I just kind of got used to that. And so now that I'm trying to be more open and talk more, it's hard, <laughs> very hard. And right now I actually joined this the group for uh, autistic young adults it's like a, a social social group and they they meet you know every other week and I, and I, I go to most of the meetings and and 
the the goal of the group is to uh, provide autistic uh, autistic. Uh, the goal of the group is to provide people with autism more social interaction and and outlets to develop friendships and others other social behavior and so I have have done some stuff with with other people in this group outside of of the meetings like like I've, I've gone to a couple movies with just me and one other person, which which I almost never done before joining this group. It was just like going to the movies. It would just be only me or me, my parents, and my sister. I think that's about it. Uh, that's all I have to say. My dog is so spoiled. She just wants to be petted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you see her? Yeah. <laughs> You're so spoiled, Lola. She's my mom and dad's dog, and since I live with them, I I take care of her. And uh, and we have another dog named Buddy. Gr you know, growing up, my family always had at least one dog in the house, and I've always enjoyed animals. You can tell behind me. I've had those posters up in my bedroom for years and just don't want to change. And yeah, I think animals have helped me in a way. Maybe I'll talk about that in another video. But for now, I, I think I've run out of it run out of stuff to say about this. Oh, I guess one other thing is if I had gotten diagnosed earlier in my life, that probably would have been a lot more helpful. Would have helped me a lot more. Yeah, the earlier the diagnosis, the better. I think that's the case for every illness. So until next time, bye.